second only to a good chopping blade or survival knife, having a reliable and powerful saw in your survival kit. Fast becomes one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal. In a survival scenario, calories are limited. Harvesting the most amount of wood in the most efficient manner possible for use in shelter building, cooking, creating fires for warmth, construction, designing traps, creating weapons. In the great woodlands of North America and Europe, a saw is the most indispensable tool in your survival arsenal. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So just out here enjoying one of the last days of fall before the winter hits and the black flies are just coming out. So I thought I'd get this video out before they come out in mass. Today, I'm just gonna show you the Silky F-180, which I think is probably one of the best backpacking saws that money can buy for the $30 price point. It's a lot faster than the Baco Laplander. I know there's a lot of people who are very, you know, adamant on the Baco Laplander or a buck saw for whatever sort of sentimental reasons. But I can tell you right now, this is simply a better saw at an equivalent price point. It's got the thin form factor, so it's nice and packable. Uh, it's lightweight, plastic handle, rubberized, where it needs to be rubberized, right on the place where you grip it. And it's got a locking mechanism which is made of plastic and some steel components. Now, they didn't make it from plastic because they wanted to go cheap on the materials. If you look at their Silky Gone Boy, it's basically almost the same length. It's a little bit longer. I think the Gone Boy is about 30 millimeters longer. This is the Gone Boy Curve. So with the curve saws, I've found that they tend to cut better for limbs when you're going over and around something, as opposed to a horizontal cut where the flat saw edge is going to excel. With the curved form factor, it's a little better if you're going up and over like that. So if you're cutting limbs off trees, a saw like this would be better. These are professional grade saws made for arborists, but Silky has uh, become a household name amongst bushcrafters, survivalist preppers as well. The pocket boy has an extra fat little grip to it because it's such a small saw and because you're going to be doing some vigorous work with it. I guess they figured you had to have a, a firmer grip and because it's a smaller handle uh, they basically make the grip a little fatter on the butt end so it's not going to slide out of your hand like that. So pretty cool little saw. It's about 10 millimeters shorter than the F-180. So it's not that much smaller than the F-180, but what I found is that the F-180 with that extra, just 10 millimeters of uh, saw blade, you can cut bigger pieces of wood significantly faster. Every time you extend it like a centimeter or so, it really drastically increases the cut time. Now that might compel you to want to go out and get a Katana Boy 1000 because it's a meter long and it has the largest cutting size. But of course you got to factor in weight, you got to factor in um, ease of use, versatility. This by far is the best day pack, three day, even you know up to probably a seven day saw. Anything, you know, I would actually recommend the Big Boy 2000 if you're going over a three day stay, especially if it's in winter time. If it's in winter, you're gonna to wanna to get a bigger saw than this, just because you're probably gonna need bigger wood and you're gonna expend more energy using these smaller saws to get the same amount of wood. But if it's just summer, fall, spring, day hike, or two or three day hike, something like that, and you don't really need a fire, but a fire's for convenience sake, then Definitely the Silky F-180 is the way to go. Cuts horizontally excellent. So if you wanted to fall trees that were up to six inches in uh, diameter, and that's pretty big. A six inch diameter tree is pretty sizable. So consider that. Now, a lot of people like the Gone Boy, particularly bushcrafters enjoy this saw. This is the curved version. I don't know how popular this one is amongst that crowd yet. 
Uh, like I said, the curved has its advantages when you're going up and over. But I find when you're doing a horizontal cut, it's a little harder to orient the cut to utilize and really exploit that curved edge in the way that you would if you're going up and over. Because the natural cut then is to, is to come up and then to come over like that, which is consistent with the, the rounding of the saw. Whereas if you're going sideways, the tendency is to just cut like this straight. So that rounding, in order to utilize it for a horizontal cut, you really have to maneuver with the saw, which probably takes a bit more energy until you get proficient at doing that. So that's why I would encourage you to check out this saw. Probably the best 30 bucks you can spend. Uh, these saws are chrome plated. They're made of Japanese SK4 steel. They're pull saws, so they only cut on the pull movement. A lot of people would say, well, the Baco Laplander cuts both ways. Well, this does more work one way than the Baco Laplander does two ways. So you're using a lot less energy to get more energy from the forest. If I had to pick four silky saws to do everything, it would be the Silky F-180, it would be the Big Boy 2000 for the bigger logs, you know, the 8 to 12 inch logs, the Katana Boy 500 for the even bigger logs, and the Katana Boy 1000 for falling large trees, for cutting very large pieces of timber uh, over 18 inches. So if you have those four saws, and you can get extra blades, but these blades are designed to never have to be sharpened. They're that sharp, they're heat treated. So, I mean, you're never probably gonna have to sharpen this blade. If you do have to sharpen it, it's gonna take you a long time because the steel is just very, very hard steel. Uh, you're probably gonna use this for many, many years before it's so significantly dull that you're gonna need to sharpen it. Now, you can get away with a pocket boy and still saw four inch logs, four to six inch logs, but it's gonna take you a lot longer than it's going to with the F-180. So you can cut a log, which is the length of the saw blade, but just bear in mind, it's going to take a lot more energy than if you were to jump up to the next biggest saw in Silky's lineup. It's gonna cut the time in half, probably more than in half. So something to consider anyway so i hope you found this video useful check out the f-180 probably one of the best saws you can also check out the pocket boy curve that's a new saw that they have on the market uh, one thing i should say also is that the pocket boy weighs more than the f-180 because it has the metal handle the metal locking mechanism and a big beefy rubberized handle whereas the f-80 is pretty bare bones so that's another reason why it's an excellent day packer saw so check it out folks thanks for watching canadian prepper out